So in terms of the psychological well-being of the workforce, um, this is probably the, the only stats-heavy bit of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, the first thing to note is that um, it's really important to distinguish between common mental health problems, so depression, anxiety, and other um, factors like that, and severe and enduring mental illness, such as bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Um, and it's those last two, the severe and enduring conditions, um, actually haven't changed very much as a proportion of the population over the last 30 or 40 years. That's not to say they don't have an, a really very significant impact on obviously quality of life and employment. And we uh, I think, about going to start a, a new study at the Work Foundation in the new year uh, looking at schizophrenia in the workplace. Um, and that's an area where employment rates uh, for people with schizophrenia are some of the lowest um, in the working age population. But what I'll be talking about is the common, and, um, the common mental health problems such as depression and anxiety. And some data suggests that we've seen a trebling of the number of people of working age with depression and anxiety since the early 90s. Um, and obviously that's a really very significant um, increase. Um, and actually it's quite hard to get a handle on all the drivers of that. We know some of them, uh, but it's actually quite hard really to, uh, to, put, to pin it down to one or two things. Um, we know, and Professor Lord Layard of, of the LSE, for example, has done work on this, um, that mental health is economically very significant, and probably um, indeed economically more important than poverty. Um, accounts for about 2% of our GDP, 16% of adults of working age have a mental illness, and half of those are seriously ill. Many of them don't even have a diagnosis, don't go and see their doctor. And we know that uh, it's the biggest factor that causes the flow on to uh, incapacity benefit or ESA as it is now. Comorbidity, as I mentioned, is a big issue. We found across all our studies, of, you know, if you've got rheumatoid arthritis, 25% chance of developing depression. Um, the same pattern goes across most of these chronic conditions. And we know also that people with depression and anxiety still, despite the fact that there's been more publicity and more people in the public eye coming forward and um, telling their stories about their mental illness, um, there still is an issue in organisations about both self-stigma and, and a fear of stigma in the organisation which might lead people not to disclose their condition. And we know that the economics of, of this are really very significant. That, um, the Sainsbury Centre, or used to be the Sainsbury Centre, the, the, the Centre for Mental Health uh, a couple of years ago did some research that showed that mental health related presenteeism, so people coming to work when they're not really well, costs UK business about £15 billion a year. So it's a not insignificant uh, drain on the productive capacity of um, what David McLeod won't let me call human capital. So why have we seen some of these increases? Well, uh, I'm going to focus a little bit on the, the workplace issues, but it cannot be denied that this, the wider societal issues here are very significant, and you could even argue more significant than some of the workplace issues. We've obviously seen in the last few years a growth in the number of people with personal debt problems. So, you know, financial issues contribute to an undermining of people's psychological well-being and their resilience. Family breakdown. I've mentioned long-term conditions, and we can't ignore that as well. And also job insecurity. I think in 2004, something like 65% of people said that they were confident that they, their job was safe. And that figure in uh, earlier this year dropped down to 40%. Um, and that's even worse in some sectors than others. Um, so job insecurity clearly um, isn't just about the financial consequences. It's about you know, dignity. It's about a sense of identity and so on. Um, but obviously work plays a part. And obviously if you're the sort of person who perhaps has a debt problem or is going through a divorce and you're, going, you're working in an organisation with lots of change going on, lots of uncertainty, the compounding effect of all those factors may manifest itself first in the workplace. And that makes it quite hard for line managers because it's difficult for them to know where their duty of care as an employer starts and finishes. If someone's coming to work with a, more of a predisposition to be depressed, um, they may have normally been resilient to a, a change at work had it not been for those other factors. Um, how do you, you know, work out where, as a line manager, um, you can intervene? 